Hello and welcome to Battle of Wits. I am your host, Elspeth Wright, and with me as always is my co-host, Madeline Cottrell. We hope you are doing well. We have a very exciting episode for you today. Uh, from the Half a Star podcast, we have Justin Shaw. Hi. Hello, Justin, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, it is far too late to be sipping a coffee, but we're from the <laughs> East Coast. We'll drink coffee at any hour of the day. I remember exactly. I once hung out. I hung out with my parents at a Tim Hortons at 10 p.m. one time. <laughs> so we roll double That's double. A... Sup? Nice. Very good. And his co-host Benton Hartley. Hello, Benton. How are you? I'm doing well. I just received 11 boxes of my own things that I got shipped from Toronto, and I paid $900 for the privilege to do so. So I'm doing great. Wow. I hope there are diamonds in those boxes. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten all the way sure. through them yet, but maybe there is. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness for sweet daddy CRB with that true dough, true dad. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get that money, 900. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. All right. On that note, are you ready to begin Battle Absolutely. of Wits? Yeah. Yes. Let's okay. Do it. Let's start with the warm-up round. In this round, I will ask you some interesting questions, and you will answer to the best of your ability. Uh, please wait for me to call on you to answer. Um, you know, I like a bit of law and order in my, <laughs> in my game. <laughs> All right. So the first question is, what was Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers known for? Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers. What was it? Uh, Benton, you uh, answer first. Yeah, I think uh, obviously he was known for dope blowjobs, right? I yeah. mean, from the sounds of it. <laughs> you would think. That's that's just what I would assume, just judging by the name. But what a flop and slopper. That doesn't sound like a, like it definitely sounds like a blowjob, but like maybe not. Maybe not a satisfying one. So maybe a it's not a blowjob. Blow maybe it's like a disappointing, <laughs> like high expectations, low execution kind yeah. of situation. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. Okay, okay. Uh, Justin, what was Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers known for? Uh, just in the weighing of the answer, before I share mine, uh, I would just like to put a bit of a microscope onto Benton's answer. Uh, <laughs> just to understand what he thinks a good blowjob is. Uh, just want to weigh that consideration into when you're weighing the answers. That's all I have to say. I just... Uh, but, sorry? Fine. No, I'm just gonna say, I feel like it's like art. You know it when you see it. You can't really describe <laughs> it. Well, that's certainly uh, Mona Lisa. Three minutes in and we're already talking about blowjobs. This is gonna be an interesting we're, game. <laughs> uh, however, we all know. Uh, could you repeat the name? I know it. I just want, I just want to hear it. We all know. Yeah. <laughs> Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers. Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers. <laughs> Yeah. was, of course, well-known for that well-documented court case against Ebenezer Scrooge for the use of the name Ebenezer. Now, Charles Dickens wanted that Ebenezer for the morality tale of Christmas, whereas <laughs> Ebenezer Flop and Sloppers, boy, that's a second banana of a name. You don't want that in your Christmas <laughs> book. That's the answer. Very good. Both of you, very good answers. Thank you. Um, you know Justin, Benton almost had it, but second banana of a name. Yeah. Really, yeah. that's worth the point. Well yeah. done. Yeah. That was, I don't think I've heard that phrase before, but I'm going to use it. That's, that's glorious. It's all yours. I've got more bananas where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. So Ebenezer Flop and Slopper's wonderful water slides was actually once a, an amusement park, a water slide park, obviously. Um, it was in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, and it is now abandoned, which is hard to believe because... Yeah, imagine. <laughs> How is that close to a blowjob? How is Ben <laughs> close? I mean, water slides... 
It's wet. Come get wet, wet with Ebenezer Flop and Flopper. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Gross. Um, okay, <laughs> we're moving on. Suwon, South Korea is home to a theme park with a very interesting theme. What is it? Justin, we'll start it's with Eb you this time. Ebenezer. Flop and flop. <laughs> uh, they knew it wasn't working in North America in the West. So they're like, East. The money's in the East. We're going to go to, where was it again? Suwon, South Korea. South Korea. Hello. Where the kids love going to the water parks. And uh, I'm pretty sure the translation of Ebenezer Flop and Slopper is uh, way, makes way more sense in South Korea. You know how it is when you translate something from mm. another language into English. It's like, whoa, that sounds wacky. In South <laughs> Korea, Ebenezer Flop and Slopper. Oh my God. Every summer, please. Take me. <laughs> take me, take me, take me, take me now. <laughs> Very good, Justin. I yield ben, my time. What is your answer? Um, I think Justin's a little off base, actually. Uh, I understand where oh. he's coming from, but uh, what, my understanding is that the, the theme park in Suwon, South Korea, is actually a completely immersive theme park experience about what it's like to live in North Korea. Oh, um, no. <laughs> So, you know, you, you basically get all of your uh, worldly possessions taken from you, and then you have to live and subsist on a loaf of bread every week and talk about how good Kim Jong-un is at everything. Um, and you pay handsomely for the privilege. Mm. Handsomely? Yeah. <laughs> I paid so much, I'm handsome now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Much like Kim Jong-un is. Mm. What you know? a babe. The most handsome. <laughs> what a babe. What a hunk. <laughs> Look out, Done. early 2000s Orlando Bloom, who for some <laughs> reason is the first heart throb to pop into my head. <laughs> Kim Jong-un is Kim. here. Pirates Ooh. of my Caribbean. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I should have thought of a, any other celebrity. Um, yeah, both good answers. Benton, I'm giving it to you. Because um, actually, the theme park is toilet themed, so... What? Not far off too. <laughs> How is at least water park has water? <laughs> oh, are you telling me that North Korea doesn't have toilets, Justin? Yeah. Huh? Are North you North calling North, North Korea a toilet? No. Do you want us to get shot? <laughs> Sounds like you're calling North Korea a toilet. Yeah. I yield the point. Yeah. <laughs> Not my pride. I never yield my pride. So the theme park is called Mr. Toilet House. It features permanent exhibitions, including some interesting toilets from around the world, uh, which I would like to share with you now. Here are some of the beautiful, beautiful toilets from around the world uh, <laughs> at Mr. Toilet House in Suwon, South Korea. So <laughs> let's get your thoughts and impressions. If, if you had to choose one, first of all, well, uh, see, I when I was in uh, school, I was in the concert band, and I played the euphonium. Mm, nice, um, I played the tuba. Yeah, and I, I often, you know, I would, I would have to like release the spit valve to get all of the fluid out of it, and I often found myself wondering what would happen if it went the other way. Um, <laughs> so I would be drawn to the one on the left, I think, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Where, yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, I, I would take the right. Uh, first reason, uh, I don't want to pee in something that Ben has definitely shoved his whole penis into. Uh, <laughs> and that is a generous statement, Benton. You're welcome. Yeah, I appreciate um, That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Now, we're all thinking, uh, I feel like the assumption is, oh, we'll go number one in these things. I'm putting my whole ass into that thing in the mouth. <laughs> Uh, I'll, give me 10 minutes i'll figure it out i hope it's also a good day yeah that's that was sort of that was my thought when i first saw these was you know the the one with the mouth is a little is more accessible to mm -hmm. you know every type of uh downstairs mix-up <laughs> and uh you could probably poo in it as well whereas the other one yeah i mean the one on the left is more of a urinal let's be honest yeah, yeah. well 
like I said before, give me 10 minutes. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Find a way. And go. Hey. Oh. Okay, and I have uh, one more image from uh, Mr. Toilet House. Hey, Justin, it's Wait. the first apartment we shared. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, let's be real though. In downtown Toronto, that is like nineteen hundred dollars a month for mm, just that, that room. That's the apartment. It's yeah. just that. <laughs> You, you poop on one and you work on the other. That's your death. <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to calling it the office. <laughs> you, still, you still have to sublet one of the toilets out. <laughs> <laughs> but not tell the landlord. Also, yeah. are those uh, are those gender signs? Yeah. Like, that's That I found very uh, upsetting. <laughs> people, are, look, people are so attached to the gender binary that they they just have to like they just have to gender inanimate objects like mm -hmm. even when they're like ugh. anyway <laughs> like, yeah, like, there's the, that I, I mean i think it's always silly to have gendered washrooms but in this case <laughs> it's not the toilet that that's not the reason that they gender it. <laughs> exactly. i don't think I don't, like you poo or you poo i don't care like it's mm -hmm. but I, I don't think there's like a different poo toilet for for men and women, I don't think. No. Now I'm yeah. not. If you had to choose, which would you choose once again? I think honestly, the one <laughs> on the left for me. I, you know, I always like my social time where I can get it, mm -hmm. and to like, you know, and in, in the age of coronavirus, you really don't get that face to face <laughs> communication anymore. And so for me, I would much rather be head on with the other person rather than mm. sitting in profile. It, they're quite close as well. So I imagine you'd be like rubbing your knees together. Yeah, which it's, could be some nice intimacy during these, you these could trying some, times. You could do some thumb wars during a really difficult uh, <laughs> situation to pass like the rock, time. Paper, scissors. Yeah, exactly. But I, okay, for me, I'd also pick the left one, but... Mm -hmm. Not because I want like a, a bathroom a bath roommate. Uh, <laughs> I I'm taking up both toilets. I will put my feet up uh, mm. when I'm going number two. But we got to consider number one for that room because you're going back to back. If that's oh. the case, <laughs> that's true. I don't even think yeah. If there's a standing or if there's a standing pier and a sitting pier. You it's could, <laughs> I, read, I didn't even think of that. That's like verging on human centipede territory. Oh, that wow. Like, that's, <laughs> if you're both standing to pee, you could just lean against each other and just be like, yeah. hey, Mel, hey, what's up? Yeah, you could do that forever. It would be like a completely like uh, perpetual yeah. peeing situation. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. Then you wouldn't get any work done. <laughs> yeah, just... You're just staying in there, peeing all day, willy-nilly. <laughs> With your office pee buddy all day. And your second Wait banana. Time. <laughs> your second banana. <sighs> okay. The next question also has a visual element. So I will leave that screen up there for now. <clears throat> now, earlier in the day, you may remember that I <laughs> messaged both of you to see if you speak Spanish. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm going to dazzle uh, you. With All my right. pronunciation of this, because uh, I did take Spanish in first year university, which was 16 years ago. So my accent is going to be on point. Oh, shit. I just psyched myself out. <laughs> <laughs> God. Isla de la Munecas, <laughs> as it is perfectly pronounced in Mexico is known for its, or is home to what famous attraction? So there's this island in Mexico, which you've heard me say the name of, and it is known for its famous attraction. What is its famous attraction, Justin? Famous attraction in the island of, could you say it again, please? De la Munecas. Ah. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dela Menekes, uh, now I apologize as well. My Spanish, a little bit rusty. I took, I also took it in first year university. I feel like that's just a mandatory like throwaway class. 
but you take it. And then by the time you graduate, it's in the in memoriam of all the classes you didn't do when you graduated. <laughs> I'm definitely not just stalling for time. Well, I give you the real answer. And uh, the name of the island, it gives it away in the name. The island's name again is what? <laughs> <laughs> it is fuck you justin no. <laughs> i've been there <laughs> it is they call it de la munekis de la munekis that means the day of necking uh where okay let me explain necking if you've never tried it give it a go necking is uh where you like make out and that's like an old timey word for making out. And the attraction <laughs> on the island of the day of necking is <laughs> once every solstice, they come together, the people, and they neck. And it's free, it's beautiful. You've heard of the purge where mm -hmm. they like ah, 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 kill each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But necking, it's beautiful. They do it at like 2 p.m. when they should be having a siesta. And boy, mm. they're tuckered out when they're done. So <laughs> that's my long-winded answer, Your Honor. That was, that was wonderful. That was excellent. Thank you. Uh, Benton, what is your answer? Yeah, um, I've also, I've been to this island before. Uh, it's very famous for its uh, gigantic sculpture of the head, neck, and shoulders of a gigantic cow. Mm. Uh, but sometime long ago, there was a massive hurricane that actually ripped the skull of the cow off and plunked it into the Atlantic Ocean in the Gulf of Mexico. And so all that's left now is the cow's neck. And so they call it the Isla de los Munecas. Because <laughs> uh, it's a, a cow's neck. And that, my friends, was a hasty pun. <laughs> it was... It was appreciated, but um, I gotta say, did they did they never have the bottom half of the cow statue? Because that's utterly yeah. ridiculous. Hey, 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 hey! All right. I don't have any cow puns, but <laughs> viewers slash listeners, where do you want to go? Sweet sex island, <laughs> or half a cow island with Ben, where you can be like, oh, we found it in the water. Nice. <laughs> po if it's a popularity contest uh, give me the prom king crown i don't know maybe they have cow's ice cream there and then that's like the whole reason people go to that island shout out pei <laughs> yeah we're getting rich off this episode mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah okay uh very good answers both of you so what this is what the island is actually known for. It directly translates to Island of the Dolls or Doll Island. Uh, because this island is filled with creepy dolls. Ah. I like this one. He looks like he's having fun. Get it. Kill it. I suppose that's one way of interpreting the look <laughs> on his face. Get it. So do you guys want to take a guess as to why this island is filled with creepy dolls? Yes. Yeah. Because, ben, you go. I went first. Yeah, I'll, I'll allow you to stall for time again by going. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm being a gentleman. I, oh, good. Yeah. Look at um, him. He's wearing a blazer. Like a I, gentleman. <laughs> all I can think is that it was at some point a horror movie set. That's going to be my guess. Oh, Ben. <laughs> oh, simple, simple <laughs> Ben. It's what we call him back home. The dolls are the... It's the name of the island again? <laughs> yeah, Doll Island. In Doll England. Island. The people of Doll Island. It was uh, founded by Salvador Dali. And <laughs> they had an infestation. Yes, they did. Of rats. And as we all know, rats are afraid of babies. So they hung dolls to ward off the rats. So my point is I nearly had a mental breakdown. Is it's like a scarecrow <laughs> for Doll Island. <laughs> so founded by noted colonial explorer Salvador Dali. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that was what. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Absolutely beautiful, both of you. Uh, Justin, you're getting that point. Absolutely. Um, well done, yeah. though. Because I'm right. <laughs> so, Look it up on Wikipedia. Legend. Uh, according to legend, the dolls are there uh, because they are possessed by the spirit of a young girl who drowned under mysterious circumstances. So oh. it's just as whimsical and fun as both of your answers. Yeah, even more Dog. chilling than I could have possibly hoped for. Ghost babies. As if these needed to be creepier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it okay. kind of, it, it's like Ben's half cow thing. Like, that's still <laughs> kind of weird. Pretty creepy. That was creepy. I just want to bring love. <laughs> 2, 2 p.m. every solstice. What? Like me. <laughs> All right. I've got one more question in this round for you. <clears throat> what is High Point, North Carolina known for? Benton. Mm. What is High Point, North Carolina known for? Okay, so uh, every New Year's Eve, the citizens of High Point, North Carolina, get absolutely blitzed out of their tree on, like, the dankest possible cush imaginable. And then they go and they stand on the top of a hill and they just look up and point. <laughs> and then they just wait there until everyone in town looks up to see what they're pointing at. And once everyone in town has looked up, then they release some doves and usher in the new year. Oh, nice. Yeah. They release doves and usher, like the singer Usher? Yeah, yeah. So they release <laughs> doves and then Usher comes out <laughs> and performs his classic hit, yeah. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, Lil John hasn't been able to make it the last few years, but Usher and Ludacris make it every year. So it's beautiful. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. Justin, what is High Point, North Carolina known for? I'm sorry. I just need to wash the hooey out of my ear. <laughs> ben, you so and so. I am known for my hooey. North Carolina, as we all know, is home to the 16 time world heavyweight champion, Ric Flair. Hello. <laughs> and at High Point was the town where he was conceived. Uh -huh. Believe it or not. And so every day on the birthday of Ric Flair, on the day that I forget, they get together, they being the town of High Point, I remembered, they get together to the hotel where he was conceived and they look to the skies and, and slap each other on the chest themselves. <laughs> on the chest. Uh, not two hands, Ben, you don't know what you're doing. I don't. One hand, like the Ric Flair, he would chop. Yeah, like, no, and, yeah. Yeah, and they would look up to the sky and howl 16 times out of respect <laughs> for the dirtiest player in the game. Woo! Wow. Woo! <laughs> Nature boy, Ric Flair. Those were both <laughs> excellent answers. Thank you. Uh, the correct answer... You're, you were both, oh my goodness, so, so close. It's weird because you had quite different answers. <laughs> you're very close. I'm shocked now. But you were remarkably close because it's actually home to the world's largest chest of drawers, of course. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> chest. <laughs> Hello. Actually, that kind of looks like my dresser. Oh, wow. I wonder it costs so much to get it mailed back from Toronto. Exactly. <laughs> it's a 39-foot-tall dresser, $900 a deal. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this was construct constructed in 1926 uh, to prove that High Point is the furniture capital of the world, uh, which... As somebody who is from the French fry capital of the world, mm -hmm. I get it. We put up a museum and a sign that said that we are that, and uh, that makes it true. So I like I like High Point's flats, yeah. to be honest. Uh, ben, do you want to tell them about the time we paid a visit to Prince Edward Island's Potato Museum? 
The uh, oh, please do. Leary Potato Museum in O'Leary, Prince Edward Island, uh, featuring the Potato Hall of Fame, which is not a Hall of Fame about good potatoes. It is a Hall of Fame about people that grew potatoes really well. Oh, uh, nice. It's kind of a bummer because I was expecting it to be like, here are some pictures of some really good potatoes. It um, also had but, the bad potatoes. Yeah, it also had the Hall of the Blights. Yeah. Where you could go and look at the different ways that potatoes get infected with things. Oh, wow. Tragic. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. tragic. Yeah. Bring my... our economy to our knees. <laughs> uh, my hometown uh, in New Brunswick, well, actually, like the whole county that I grew up in, we would get two weeks off of school every September for potato break. What? Uh, so that <laughs> so what? that farmers could hire children oh to harvest potatoes. That's and awesome. like, you're both from PEI. I thought that you guys would be like, yeah, us too. But no, it was nope. specifically That's because wild. my town and my county was very much owned by McCain's Frozen Foods. So yeah. they needed our little hands to pick potatoes. Man. That sounds like something that would happen in like the show Riverdale. You know, <laughs> the mayor's bought off by Hiram Lodge. He's like, oh, we got to get the kids to pick potatoes. It builds character. Yeah. Which it does. Oh, it does. Yes, very much so. I never did it. And that is why I am a trash human <laughs> with no character. Stayed at home playing video games. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um, Benton, I'm going to give you the point for that last what? question. <laughs> what? Just... You know, keep okay. things interesting. <laughs> what do you mean, what? I don't <laughs> because it was good. a wonderful answer. <laughs> yeah. He took very literally, you know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> great. Okay, great. Okay, so at the, the end of that round. At the end of that round, you are tied with two points apiece. All right, now it is time for the what does it mean round. In this round, I will show Benton and Justin some interesting words, and they will tell me what they think these words mean. Our first word is ed many. <laughs> Normally, I uh, look up how to pronounce the word beforehand, but I completely forgot how to do that today because I haven't recorded in a month. So. Ed, uh, you know what? As part of this round, because there are only two of you, I want you to tell me how you think this word is pronounced, and I'll tell you if you're correct. Okay. Uh, Justin, we'll start with you. Thanks. Uh, I grew up in a, a very religious house, actually, and uh, uh, not a week went by where we didn't hear uh, someone in the house Say mention uh, Adam Danis, Adam, Adam <laughs> Danis, which uh, I'll admit I haven't read the whole Bible, just the first few chapters. But in Genesis, when uh, God made Adam, uh, he was like, "Great for now, but you're lonely. You need a partner." And this is in the book, mm. uh, so he makes Eve out of Adam's rib, and he's like, this is disgusting. Oh, what a process this will be. And so it might seem very scientific, but really it's a create a creationist word to describe how God made Eve from a piece of Adam. Uh, mm. So Adam Zanus, Adam Zanus, uh, it depends. It, I'm Presbyterian, so Catholics might have a slightly different thing. Kind of mm. like how with the Lord's Prayer, it's slightly different. Very good, Justin. Uh, Thank you. Benton, yeah. what, what do you think this word means? Uh, so admin wences uh, oh. is, uh, it's one of those really, really, really specific German words. You know, that like how, how like in the German language, there are all of these like crazy long words that express like one very specific feeling. Uh, and admin wences is one of those. And it comes uh, about when someone is walking along the street and they're suddenly struck 
by the idea that the American dream has died <laughs> and that it is no longer possible to work hard and achieve all of what you want to achieve in life as a middle-class American person. And unfortunately, it's so specific that these people are afflicted by this condition specifically because they have watched Mad Men in its entirety. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they see Don Draper's journey from season one as a high powered ad executive all the way to the end of the show where he's starting to kind of go on the spiritual journey of self-discovery. And they see themselves in that reflected. And then one day they're just walking down the street in the middle of High Point, North Carolina, and they're looking up at the 29 foot tall chest of drawers and they just think to themselves, it's, there's no meaning left in the world. And I, I just don't know what to do. I guess I'll go storm the Capitol or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I, don't know. Yeah. I mean, the American dream's alive again because uh, Biden's president now and everything's fixed, right? That's yeah. what I'm led to believe. Another very we'll old white man is in charge. So we're yeah. all, it's fine. Yeah. It actually was fixed during uh, uh, January 1st when the calendar changed. Mm. All the problems were attributed to the year. Clearly. Right. It's true. It's true. I woke up on January 1st uh, in a happy relationship. I had grown <laughs> three inches and I had no debt. It was just like, wow. <laughs> this is... Thank it God 2020 like is over and my life is back to normal as a Victoria's Secret model. You had a case of uh, reverse Adam Zanus, where <laughs> comes out of Eve. Yeah. The Lord works in mysterious ways. That's all I'll say. So, <laughs> but so does definitely. John Hamm, though. John Hamm also works in mysterious he ways. Does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Also, I will say one more thing. Okay. And I, this has nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to point it out that uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in Nova Scotia, and the premier of Nova Scotia was also named John Hamm. Nice. Take that into consideration for the point. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> so these were both very good answers. Um, Benton, I appreciated your pronunciation. Justin was weirdly close. So I'm going to give you both a point. Hey, all right. <laughs> Just keeping the game tied. So what it actually means is one who takes an oath on a religious book. Oh. So what? Justin mentioned the Bible. But Benton, yeah. when you said the word, I was like, is that how it's actually said? <laughs> so because I am a professional who does not look up how to pronounce words well and we're recording this on inauguration day so it's a it's a exactly. very apt word so i didn't good. even plan for that i wrote yeah. this <laughs> i wrote this episode like a month ago <laughs> 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 all right photolysis photolysis benton yeah <laughs> i don't know why i just said your name like that photolysis so benton what does photolysis <laughs> mean I think I'm not even going to try to be funny and I think I'm just going to try to guess this. And I think that it's, I think it might just be something being powered by the sun, like okay. solar powered. That's all I'm going to say. It's not even going to be funny. And if Justin's funnier than me, give him the point, but I just want to know if that's the correct answer. So that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Justin, what is your answer? Well, I'm glad Ben is suddenly concerned, aware of he's not being funny. That's uh, great. <laughs> Uh, I can but, stop giving uh, him pity points now, thank God. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite the opposite. It's not powered by the sun. It's a, it's a form of paralysis that happens when you take too many selfies. Or mm -hmm. if uh, it was actually first uh, introduced by Fergie, who back in uh, 2005, I think, whenever... Uh, her like solo career was taken off. Mm -hmm. 2006, give or take, sorry. Um, photo life, she's all over the media and she, she, she would just find herself just like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta sit down. And they're like, we think it's photo lysis. Uh, and she's like, hey, say that again. Photo lysis, Fergalicious photo lysis. <laughs> and as soon so as you said Fergie, I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> and I mean, so, you can't not. <laughs> Uh, eventually, you know how the writing process is, and 
the industry, the music industry, things change. It wasn't a marketable word, so they cut it out. Uh, but she was the founder of uh, of the word in the sense that uh, she found it. Photolysis paralysis from uh, too many photos. Very good, very good. Uh, that just triggered a little memory when I was in second year university. I went on a date with this like very handsome like grad student who was like very Ooh. together and very sweet. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, I got to impress him. And then partway through the date, my phone rang, which of course was a pink flip phone. And my ringtone was London Bridge by Furby. <laughs> and there was no way of saving that day. To quote that. Fergie, oh, snap. <laughs> I had forgotten about that until just now, and wow. I need a therapist immediately. <laughs> so for that... <laughs> And because, Bented, I appreciate that you did try, but you were incorrect. Justin gets the point, because yeah. props to Fergie. Um, it's actually disintegration resulting from exposure to, a ra to radiation. Wow. So, also weirdly close again, Justin. Hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm weirdly close to everything. That's <laughs> kind of my mantra. Weirdly close. Not quite. But Not weird. quite. Yeah, that like if you were like a superhero, that would be your superpower. Is just like <laughs> almost getting things, lighting things almost on fire. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> not, not burning, but yeah, that's like yeah. that's like smoking slightly. Yeah, oh, Ooh, we gotta an eye on that. <laughs> I'm gonna move okay. my towel away from there. <laughs> we have one final word in this round. It is letting. Ignus, let I don't know, Justin, tell me how to say this word and tell me what it means. Lentigonese. That's the <laughs> classic Italian comedy. Lentigonese. Um, this was, uh, we all are familiar with the Greek tragedy of Antigone, uh, the, follow, uh, the fallout of hmm, Oedipus, the death of Oedipus. So you have Antigone, who's like his niece. Um, and then... Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Italy, they decided this play is boring, so boring, we need some laughs. So they put on some masks, like those big broad, like featured mm. masks that do really broad gestures back when like comedy in Italy was, we ain't got your nose. And it's like, ah, <laughs> it's genius, ah, poop everywhere. I don't know, like they just make really cheap and crass jokes. And so they decided to spice up the story of Antigone calling it uh, Lentigones, and boy, did it tank. Uh, <laughs> it was not, not favorable reviews. Uh, they didn't remount it, just ran one season, and they're mm. like, you know, let's just let this one go to bed. So Lentigones, uh, if, if this was the pandemic, if this came out during the pandemic on Broadway, the pandemic would be doing this show a favor. <laughs> oh, that bad. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Benton, what is your answer? Yeah. So, Lent to Gynos. Um, Justin, I'm surprised as a God fearing man, you wouldn't have uh, been familiar with this word. Uh, but uh, in the, uh, the Easter season, you know, people have to give up things for Lent. And back in the early days of the, uh, of the world of uh, organized medicine, um, it used to be that doctors would have to give up their chosen specialty for Lent. Um, <laughs> and so Lent, Lent to gynos are the people that chose to switch their specialty to gynecology for Lent. <laughs> um, yeah. And so it was one of the least popular ones, I guess people, cause they were all, uh, male doctors at that point, And I guess they didn't want to have to deal with women very much. Um, and so, women yeah. are terrible. Am I you right? know? Yeah. And so, uh, they really like, uh, they, they, they came up with a special word for the people who chose gynecology as their Lent specialty. Um, <laughs> I love that. They were the Lent to gynos. The Lent special, if you will. The Lent special. <laughs> Lent exactly. special. Yeah. Benton, that was a wonderful answer. Uh, the point goes to you. So My pen no, just I can't even accept the point. That's how poor uh, Lentigonese was. I, I cannot, in my heart, 
accept it. I'm sorry for even bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> so the correct answer is uh, minutely dotted or freckled. Oh, okay. Yeah. So at the end of that round, we have a tie. And you both have four points. Stay in it. But now the gloves are coming off. So we go into round three. <laughs> All right. Now it is time for the two truths and one lie round. In this round, each of you will tell me two truths and one lie. And uh, your opponent and I will try to guess which is the truth. Or which is the lie <laughs> through a series of hardcore questioning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Justin, you will yes. go first. That'd and then Rich and I will interrogate you. Please tell us your two truths and one lie. Very well. Here's what I've submitted, viewers, listeners. When I was four. I came in second place in a children's beauty pageant. That's <laughs> one. When I was 15, I was supposed to go to a PEI version of The Price is Right, but we ended up not going because my mom got sick. Oh. <laughs> Number two. Number three, the last one. I lost my virginity six months after my first kiss. Okay. Very good. Now, uh, for the viewers at home, um, you two are, are quite, quite close friends. So this mm -hmm. was very difficult for you. Um, so Benton, yeah. did any of those sound familiar? Any of those stories? Yeah. The Price is Right thing I could have sworn you've told me about before, but I'm not confident enough to immediately take it out of the running. Okay. Um, and I think I know your relationship history well enough that the third one could be true, unless you did, unless you're counting like some kiss you had in kindergarten or something as your first kiss. That's something I'm not confident about either. Now I, I, have I a, know people who've done that. Like I yeah. like that one's not. Wild. We've all been married in kindergarten, except for Ben, <laughs> who is the minister. I was. I was the minister at a kindergarten wedding. All right. See, we do know each other really well. <laughs> oh, okay. Justin, I have a question. Certainly. Um, like, tell me more about this beauty pageant. Like, wh mm. where was it? Who sponsored it? What was the prize? It was pretty low key. It was at my kindergarten, uh, if memory serves. All I remember from this event was uh, I didn't choose to sign up. My parents were like, yeah, get it, get it and work it kid. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I do remember like people, like I remember people kind of just staring at me while I was standing there. And I think there were three judges sitting at a table, just kind of like smiling and looking. Um, and I was wearing a Flintstones, uh, it was a t-shirt or, like a long sleeve, but it had Fred Flintstone saying, yeah, the dad, do <laughs> on the shirt. But I don't remember this, but my sister or my mom told me it after the fact. I lost to a little girl who winked at the judges. Mm. And mm. Uh, if, if that ain't life, if that ain't. And her story. name was Jean Benet Ramsey. <laughs> yeah. And she um, went missing. <laughs> <laughs> it was Justin. It was Justin. We solved the case. Ah, you got me. <laughs> to figure out questions, I want to ask you about the third one while still remaining respectful to the people involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were they with the same person? I guess will be my question to you. Mm. No. Okay. So wow. you so you kissed and then you were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a player now. I didn't even think of that. That's uh 
Yeah. That makes you look like a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Be bad on my own. Okay. How okay. old were you? Did you say? 17. 70. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was the name of the Prince Edward Island Price is Right? Just PEI's Price is Right. Or oh, wow. Montague's Price is Right. They had it at the Cavendish. Okay, they call it the Cavendish uh, Wellness Center or Sports Center. They opened it uh, a few years. Oh, what year was it? 2003. They opened it. I'm trying to remember because I was taking swimming lessons at the building next door. And then I found out they had better facilities there. And I'm like, well, now I'm too old for this shit. They confused a lot of people by calling it the Cavendish Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. It's not in Cavendish, but it's named after like Cavendish Fries. But they used to do like events there too. They, so they had like the gym facility upstairs. Ben and I actually did a play. We there. did a show there. Yeah. Did. And I don't know if it was in that same hall or in like, uh, they've got like another big space. That, I didn't get to see it because uh, that couldn't go. My mom got sick. I don't know if she actually was sick or if she was just like, Mom sick, which is like bullshit. <laughs> Mom really sick, know. just on her pills but, again. <laughs> but then I saw, I, I ended up seeing like photos from it uh, after, and I was like, oh, that's like not nearly as cool as like on TV. It was just like right. a very like you win like dinner at yeah. Greco or something. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, Greco! Uh, oh God, yeah. I Three haven't been homesick in so long. <laughs> no. Yeah, it was kind uh, of a. I don't know. I don't remember when the building, when it opened. That I don't know. I just know I. My okay. biggest. But you're, you were like in high school or something when this yeah. event happened or something. Fifteen. Yeah, it was grade ten. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. God, I don't know. This is tough because they could. They're all so plausible. Mm hmm. You can ask uh, one or two more questions, and then I'm gonna yeah. get a guess. Okay. Uh, were your parents proud of you for the beauty pageant? <laughs> I I think dad wasn't. I couldn't have <laughs> He definitely wasn't there. Uh, he, given I have two older sisters and my mom, they were the only ones who like would care to go to that kind of stuff. My dad doesn't even like coming to my plays or my comedy shows. He's just like, do we have to? But this was a story I heard from my mom and my sister on more than one occasion from both of them, each with like different little details. And each time I hear a new detail from them, like a new door opens up my memory brain. And I'm like, oh, okay. But this was in Cardigan. Uh, it was some weird name of the kindergarten run by Isabel Myers, name drop. I think she's still alive. <laughs> what up, Izzy? How's it going? <laughs> Izzy. Um, I remember there, I think it was in the carpeted section. Uh, <laughs> where we had a lot of superfluous details. There's there's a child beauty pageant going on, and you're telling me about uh, the carpet. Come on. I want to know. And one of the sponsors. I'm like, yeah. I was four. Okay. Did you have like a talent or anything that you did or? I just remember wearing the Flintstone shirt, standing there. I think it was really just like a walkout trot out. That's kind of so thing. much worse. That's yeah. so much yeah. creepier than if you like had if they're just sort of like, mm, which kid's the cute? That's <laughs> I, I don't like that. I don't know uh, if to be proud or worse. of it, but like to I, be I, in it. Be a therapist. In it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm ready to make a call. All right, sure. Benton, what is your guess? I'm going to go with the first kiss, losing the virginity thing. Okay. Yeah. I think I kind of want to guess the price is right, right one. So I'm going to guess that. My guess doesn't count, but I'm still guessing. Justin, what is the lie? The lie. We ain't got no tickets to prices, right? <laughs> what? What? I could have sworn you told me that story, though. Maybe you just told me that it happened. It did happen. That was an event that, like, I don't know, like, might have happened, and it might have been at that location. I think it was uh, at the Eastlake Center, though. I think it was at the Civic Center. 
maybe. So yeah. once I could tell you were lying once you started uh, going into the details about the center. It was just like that's yeah, way I, too many details. Yeah. I uh, I actually do know when uh, it opened. And I realized as I went into it, I was like, oh, shit, they opened after I moved. And I said it happened when I was 15. And I was like, fuck. Uh, so good job catching that. Ben, yes, I um, lost <laughs> my virginity uh, real quick. Right I, just didn't, I, just didn't, I just didn't want to think of you as a shitbag. <laughs> Grade 12. It's, I think yeah. a lot of 17 year olds are yeah, shit bags. No, so. <laughs> the bloom is off the rose now. I can't even look at you. I know. <laughs> it was real dumb. Uh, I was so in love with this girl and we kissed. It was a magic moment. And, uh, and then a month later, I felt my first real heartbreak. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so big deal. Uh, and not long after, I dated someone who was like, hey, we drive well together and we. Uh, uh, <laughs> she she took you to uh, Ebenezer's Flop and Sloppers. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> All the way. Oh my god! Season pass, baby. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? Uh, do you want to tell the nice people what the song was that was playing? For what? I know. I, I know. I know that information. You told me that information. What song you had going when oh. that was playing? Oh my god. You know the song I lost my virginity. I do. I know that. Some, oh, I want to get what year was it? Because I want to guess now. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was right. a current hit when it was going on. <sighs> Truly Madly oh Deeply was the first thing to come into my head. <laughs> it, uh, okay, the year the year was 1770. <laughs> uh, the East Coast are legally, you have yeah. to lose your virginity to bear a crime. Dan Rogers. That's what you and want. You, you have really to really a lot of during, <laughs> too. You walk yeah. the room yeah. while you're fumbling to put on your first condom. It's just this yeah. big baritone voice booming. <laughs> God damn the ball. Whenever people mention Halifax Piers, I just get so yeah. horny. It's... <laughs> <laughs> That was like the that was like the maritime government's like repopulation plan was to just get yeah. maritimers all horned up every time they hear that song. Uh, God. The song was first I can explain. Uh Kryptonite by Three Doors Down. <laughs> the song. Yeah. That's, uh, not even, that's not even a like sexy song. But I'll explain. I'll explain. I've oh, wow. many times. As it was happening, I was like, yeah, we're going to get some <laughs> music on. Uh, so I went to my iTunes uh, and I had music downloaded. Like, you had to have it back in my yeah. day. Uh, and so I go to the search thing and I'm like, I'm going to lose my virginity to Jim Morrison, like on TV. Uh, so <laughs> I typed in doors and I burned <laughs> through. I burned through the Doors' greatest hits, and this is my first time. I was clumsy trying to figure it all out. Took me a little while, but by the time it was happening, uh, the next song on the queue was another song with another band with the name Doors. Oh, Three Doors Down, Kryptonite, which incidentally was the same band that inaugurated Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. so now. It used to be when I heard that song, I thought about the one girl I disappointed that night. Now I get to think of all the women around the world that have been <laughs> like the real douchebag. The war's there up there. Go. Don't make me the bad guy. That's bad. Wow, that's a truly, truly beautiful story, Justin. Uh, thank you for sharing that <laughs> with us. Very brave. Um, uh, so uh, because Benton did not guess correctly, you get one point. Yes. Uh, and Benton, now it is time for your uh, right. two truths and one lie. Let me find my document here. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So uh, most of all of these are from my childhood uh, before I met Justin. So hopefully that throws a wrench into the works. But number Ready one. Once I sat through the entirety of Jurassic Park as a kid. Uh, even though I was terrified of that kind of movie because my friend's dad convinced me it was a parody of Jurassic Park called Jurassic Pork. 
Uh, number two was uh, I was the champion of a series of rap battles within my group of friends when I was in elementary school, and my rap name was Master B. <laughs> and number three, I once almost got hit in the head by a throw to first base while I was running to first base during a baseball game. I saw it coming at me, and I dodged around uh, the ball to not get hit. And in doing so, I was tagged out and I became so embarrassed that I sat in the dugout and cried. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very good. All right, All right. Justin, what is your first question? I feel like, I feel like I'm in, having the same reaction. Uh, the third one, I feel like I have heard and I'm like pretty sure that's happened. I don't want to shelf it just yet. The first one was, I know Ben doesn't like horror movies. I know it's... <sighs> Could you repeat the wording of the first one? Yeah. I'm going to be that dick. <laughs> uh, I once sat through Jurassic Park as a kid, even though I was terrified of that kind of movie, because mm -hmm. my friend's dad convinced me that it was a parody of Jurassic Park called Jurassic Pork. How old were you? Oh, geez. I was probably like seven or eight. Actually, yeah, I could have been seven or eight. I could have also been like 11 or 12 and like probably old enough to be okay with that kind of movie, but I was still a chicken shit. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, I feel like they did it in order to get me to watch it because they knew that if I like let myself go with it, I would probably like it. But I was just like yeah. too scared the whole time. Who so this was on this was on VH right. or like at home and not in yeah the, it was in my it was in my friend's basement uh, it was my friend Marcel uh, and his dad watched it with us and his dad was always kind of like winding me up he was a bit uh, he was a bit um, not psychotic necessarily but <laughs> like definitely like this was before the Saw movies came out but in my mind he is Jigsaw to me where like he would just like really play into my anxieties and he would like make me do things that I didn't want to do in order to like fight my anxieties. And so this was one of those things. And I remember like sitting and watching this movie like 75 minutes into the movie and being like, there have not been any pigs in this movie yet. <laughs> and he's like, they're coming, they're coming. And uh, yeah. All right. So is that, what was the other? Yeah, what was the second one? Oh yeah, your, uh, your rap battles. My rap battles. Yeah. <laughs> rap Tell battles. us, expand on that. So how often would your friends and you have rap battles? Yeah, so we would, um, we would have like, oh geez, probably like twice a month. I think we would have like free time where we could like catch up on homework or something. And I was always like a pretty nerdy kid. And so I would always have my homework done in advance because I sucked at being a kid, I guess. And then once my friends would finish, we would like go off in the corner and like read rap lyrics that we got off the internet to each <laughs> other and like try to be cool. And then yeah. like we would like have our friends that were like done their homework, like vote on who won the rap battle. Oh, wow. And then like near the end of the year, we had like a tournament and uh, and I won. So, so were you like actually coming up with the words or you were just like, it was sort of like, no, it was like, it was like, long. like, we just like literally printed off rap songs off the internet and just like read them. And then for so some way they just like voted who was the best at doing it. And I guess because I was like already kind of new in grade six that I kind of wanted to be an actor. I was like putting some dramatic flair on it or something. Okay. Uh, what? This was at A.G. Bailey Elementary School in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Okay. Sorry, Elspeth. Uh, no, uh, what, what, uh, do you remember any of the songs you would rap? Yeah, um, I remember uh, really, really, really being into Eminem at the time. And so I think the song that I won with was Cleaning Out My Closet from the oh, Eminem show. Terrible. And it was like some dark shit. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, I was like big into Eminem at the time because again, I went over to Marcel's house and he had all of this like explicit music that I wasn't allowed to listen to. And like, like 11 or 12 year old me, 
I was like going over there and it was like, you know, it's like when you find like a porno mag when you're a kid, you're like, oh my God, but like this was rap music, I guess. I don't know. But it was like salacious and wrong. And I knew my mom would hate it if I found it. So uh, I'm so torn uh, between the first two, Elspeth. Um, yeah. What do you think? What do you think? I, just, I keep getting so wrapped up in the stories that I'm forgetting what the other one is. So there's Jurassic Pork, Rat Battle. And I just have a hard time. My biggest hang up with the second one is that a group of kids would name Ben Master B. Oh, no, no, they did not. I named myself that yeah. completely innocently. That one's very believable to me because I yeah. also remember the Eminem phase and like, when yeah. uh, when Eight Mile came out, I used to always yeah. my friends and I would all like rap it on the school bus. Which I'm so glad we didn't oh, have wow. smartphones back then because if I ever saw footage of that, I would just have to walk into the ocean. Yeah. Like Look, just it, thinking about it is so cringy. I'm pretty sure that this came out like that. I, we were doing these rap battles before Eight Mile came out. But if mm -hmm. Lose Yourself had been in the public consciousness when I was doing that, I would have taken no prisoners, man. Oh, I mean that song's a banger. It's so good. The timeline checks out mm -hmm. that because that's right. Ben and I are the same age. We're both 91, 1991 kids. And that album came out around grade five, grade six is mm -hmm. when popping. Um, sidebar, when I was in school, there's this kid who always gave his tape player tape to the bus driver, and it was a Papa Roach <laughs> tape. Uh, <laughs> oh, every morning, every morning for like a little while. Uh, a group of like children aged six to 18 would scream out, Cut my life right from two percent. This is my last resort. Um, oh, you know, God. I um, will say, just to uh, shortchange myself of any clout I might have gained by being an Eminem fan, uh, <laughs> my second favorite musical act at the time was Good Charlotte. So, like, let's just put that out there. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. The dark times, dark times. Want to ask me any questions about the baseball thing? Or are yeah, you... baseball. That was the yeah. third one. Um, yeah. So you almost got hit and then didn't. Yeah. So uh, I'm very famous for my love of baseball, hmm. um, and this was probably the moment I decided I could never play it uh, because it really, like, I have always been scared of the ball in my entire life, like. And I don't know even how I got into this, but I was in a Kinsman ball league for like grade eight and grade nine uh, kids. And I was on the blue team and we were playing in the championship game against the gray team. And I remember like hitting the ball and it's sort of squibbling out towards the pitcher. And then the pitcher like threw it to first base. And I was like running down the line. And I remember like looking over my shoulder and seeing the ball coming to like hit me in the head and so, like, if this was the base, wait, 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 if this was the base, I, like, was coming this way, and then I, like, ran around the base, <laughs> and then the kid, like, tagged me, and he's like, dude, you're out, and I was like, no, and then all of my teammates were, like, laughing at me in the dugout, so I literally, like, sat there for, like, half an inning and just, like, bawled my eyes out. See, that, I can see myself doing that when I was mm. that age. Like, I can yeah. very much, as a, a bit of an indoor kid. I yeah. could definitely see just like, why am I not like at home reading Harry Potter right now? Yeah. Why yeah. am I doing this? Yeah. My glasses. I, yeah. <laughs> I will say I, I'm pretty certain I've heard that story before. I'm like the, it's not my first time conjuring the image of Ben running around a bait. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the first time. Mike, I, I think my contender is between the first and the second one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pick the first one. So I think the that's Jurassic Pork? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I think as well. Uh, Benton, cool. what is the lie? Uh, well, so the baseball one is true. Uh, yes. I must have told that to you before. Uh, while I did name myself Master B and fancy myself a <laughs> rapper, I did not ever win any rap battle reading <laughs> the lyrics off the internet. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the, the Jurassic Park thing, to my eternal shame, is absolutely true. And I didn't <laughs> pick up on it until the credits rolled. And I was like, wait a minute. There were no pigs in that movie. 
and Stephen Buck, the the father in this scenario, was like, "Gotcha!" And I was like, "No, <laughs> wow. that's terrific." And that's why I have trust issues. I'll keep that in mind if we ever want to have a a view party of it. Uh, <laughs> it's called yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent job, both of you. Uh, wonderful tales. Very well told. Um, and you're still tied because <laughs> let's pull to each other. So uh, with that, we have two rounds left. The score is five to five. And now it is time for the how much round. Now it is time for the how much round. In this round, I will show you some interesting things I found for sale on the internet. And you will tell me how much you think they cost. So first up, we have this beautiful vintage Inesco Rosable Jack in the Box. And I found it on Etsy. Mm. So it is described as such. Uh, so it is a beautiful 1986, which makes me resent the fact that they're calling it vintage because they're <laughs> one year older than I am. Inesco Jack in the Box featuring Rosabelle. Aww. And images from the Rainbow Forest. And it plays somewhere over the rainbow. Jeez. And that is Rosabelle. She'd be popular on Doll Island. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah. She definitely has some child spirits within her. So, um, oh, we all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what keeps me young. Yeah. Uh, I bought them off Goop, actually. They just. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. So, what are your, your thoughts and feelings on, uh, on Rosabelle? I mean, mm. clearly there's been a lot of craftsmanship taken into, I, I would assume, restoring it. <laughs> or at least preserving it. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe like you say, it's the it's the souls of those she's killed that keeps her oh. young. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking I've got a I've got a figure in mind. All right. Um, what uh, share with us that figure? Yeah, I'm gonna say it's probably like I'm gonna say 117 dollars. 117 dollars. All right. Yeah. Good guess. Uh, Justin, how much do you think Sweet Sweet Rosabelle is? Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Uh, I'm gonna say that because I think it's a red herring. I don't. I think it's actually just it, all that stuff you described is like I'm sure true about it, but I'm sure on the marketplace that doesn't mean anything. I'm sure that's just like a nice toy that I don't know if it's appreciated financially okay. that's my take okay but also there's a wide enough berth between eight and a hundred and whatever ridiculous sum ben thinks this is worth um i good reasoning but ben benton does get the point uh because she is worth 65 dollars wait what did ben say 117. 117. And we do not play by prices right rules because I think those are uh, bullshit. That's actually pretty close. It was right in the middle. It so. was right in the middle. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So well done. As we move on to our next item, one I hope you both appreciate. Oh, God. Crocoons. Oh, my God. They're crocs. Crocs and raccoons. Oh, finally killed. harmonized. Right. These are also on Etsy. And let me let me read the description for you. Custom made crocoons. I oh. get the crocs in your side and I raccoonify them. Legitimate branded licensed crocs with raccoon fur and adorable faces. Scoot around in these. Your dog will love them. Okay, so to clarify, it's real raccoon pelts? It's real raccoon, and more importantly, real Crocs. Of course, that's what that's what everyone's that's here for, are the branded licensed the Crocs. The branded licensed Crocs, yeah. that's the most important part. The only thing good about them is they cover up the fact you're wearing Crocs. Well, <laughs> I'm disappointed because I have spent all of this money on those little Croc hole plugger things, like mm -hmm. those little charms for your Crocs, and I won't be able to use those with these. 
That's true. That's what the boxes that you had sent from Toronto were, right? Like exactly. Just like, entirely nine hundred dollars worth. Nine hundred dollars worth of crockfill. Oh. I think right. it's only fair that Justin goes first this time. Yes, yeah, exactly, I'll, Justin. Yeah. You're struggling. So let me know. I'm. I'm just factoring in cost of materials and time. Like I can't imagine more <laughs> than more than thirty five dollars. Um. Okay, Benton. I think with like legitimate raccoon fur, I mean, he, this person could have just set a trap in their backyard or something, but those Crocs have got to be worth more than 35 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Crocs are kind of expensive. Yeah, I'm going to say 40. Okay. And now before I reveal the answer, um, what type of shoe and what animal pelt would you want for you and your brand? <sighs> I mean, I gotta, I gotta say that the shoe is gonna have to be a Chuck Taylor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but in terms of animal pelt, <laughs> give, me, give me a crocodile skin, Ooh. Uh, cowboy boot. Yeah, I might have to go. I actually might have to go with raccoon because oh. uh, my roommate when I lived in Toronto for a while had a vendetta against Toronto raccoons. <laughs> and uh, I feel like I would, uh, I would ingratiate myself to him by wearing them as trophies uh, for fighting the good fight against the raccoons. You'd look like, what's his name? Davy Crockett? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, to me, that's a feature, not a bug, but I appreciate what you're saying. Right. <laughs> All right. Well done, both of you. You are both very far off. Uh, Benton gets the point once again. These are $365. Yeah. So if you no. save $1 every day for an entire <laughs> year, these two can be yours. Wow. You can afford the biggest mistake of your life. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So I have one final one for you. And I just want to show you the name of it before we get to it. Mm -hmm. And I want you both to take a moment and just, you know, spitball. Mm -hmm. What do you think the nippler is? I will say it's not necessarily a sex toy. <laughs> not necessarily. I, mean, I guess but I know, say it's not a sex toy, but anything can be a, yeah. a sex toy if you, you know, try hard. <laughs> if you get lonely enough during yeah. quarantine. Okay. I think yeah, I think it's probably like a breastfeeding aid of some. That's sort. what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. You put it on, and it's like a added suction for the baby who's having trouble latching. Mm -hmm. And they get on, and it's just like a little extra. I'm not gonna do that gesture again. <laughs> uh, so lots of help. If you could use it in in relations, if you'd like, and yeah. it's up to you. All right. Um. You're both quite close. I'll show you now. The nippler. <laughs> oh. You were you were quite close, you know? Um what? So this is <laughs> why, why is it a green hand? Why is the top <laughs> half of it shaved? <laughs> why is it going through uh, its features? Oh my god. You can bend its arms, which I think is a very good feature. Oh, they're the nipples, yeah. The famous nipples. So is it it's a koala? Uh it's it's the nippler. Yeah, okay, fair. Why does it look like it's wearing gloves to clean the house? <laughs> because it's a fancy boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's showing good public health uh, measures. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, following, it's following protocols. Yeah. So this is from a website called worldaroundyou.com, and you is spelled the sheep way, not the way. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so it is made of three pairs of nipples, mink legs, uh, and pieces of troy and pieces of toys. Mm -hmm. Truly something for everyone. <laughs> The nippler. Get it for your grandma. Get it for your nephew. Give it Mink. to your neighbor. Mink is expensive, though. Mm. I don't want to know how much. <laughs> God, fuck. 
Uh, does it does it have a function or is it just like a toy? It's it's art, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I'll go first. I think that's fair. Okay. Um, I'll say seventy five dollars. Seventy five dollars. All right. Okay, I'm gonna say it's a lot because only someone with a lot of disposable income mm. want to put money into something this preposterous. I mean, like, you wouldn't look at look at those feet. But I, I just don't see this as like a thing that people are like, oh yeah, I got it on sale. Like you know, like <laughs> I I don't think price was the deterrent on possessing a thing like this it's not like oh well you know i wasn't gonna but then i saw it was marked down <laughs> uh i'm gonna say um 280 dollars wow okay that's, kind of offer. That, that's your offer that's your, your <laughs> I, both very good guesses uh you're both pretty far off but benton congratulations you swept this category no so well done, sir. Justin, uh, you should have gone to that PEI Price is Right, man. Should have. I, I would have done great, clearly. <laughs> the nippler can be yours for the extraordinary price of $128.90. Jeez. Why? So there you have it. Well done on that round. At the end of that round... Justin has five points and Benton has pulled up. He didn't come to make friends because you two are already friends. I just came to lose them. <laughs> What's up? I used to work at a pawn shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure most pawn shops have plenty of nipplers. Someone came in with a, uh, a collection of authentic like replicas of mr rogers puppets and oh those puppets were so creepy yeah i'm not, not boy not you sure. don't want to see daniel striped tiger in person that's <laughs> <laughs> not a good time it's like ah it's terrible yeah it, I, I always was confused by that because like it was such a beloved show that clearly had like not a huge budget but like it had a new puppet budget you know mm. like those puppets were were sad. Well, I also like like you watch the documentary and he's just doing his own voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not even meowing. Yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Actually, that was Mr. Rogers' impression of Tom Hanks. <laughs> That's his Daniel Strayman Tiger voice. Just his impression of Tom Hanks. He saw like he saw bosom buddies and was like, "I'm gonna do that." Mm -hmm. yeah. That guy. That's it. <laughs> All finished. right, we've got one round left. Are you ready? Yeah, just yes. a second here. Okay. Oh, right. here we go. Uh, e. yeah. Okay, it has been a tremendous game with Pleasure. Justin Shaw and Benton Hartley, and now it is time for our final round. The most nerve wracking and noisy round of the game. It is time for the lightning round. In this round, I will ask you rapid fire questions and you will answer them as quickly as you can. The point goes to whoever I hear answer the question first. So just shout it out. Are you ready for the lightning yes. round? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. E equals MC squared. squared. Where is the Eiffel Tower? Paris. Name the four seasons. Spring, fall, fall winter, winter, summer, summer, winter. Uh, what is the third planet from the sun? Earth. Uh, which colors make green? Yellow and blue. Green. Yellow and green. What animal is on the loony? Loon. The loon. The beaver is the national emblem of which country? Canada. Canada. Uh, what year did Montreal host the Olympics? 1973. 72. Oh. 76. Oh. 
34. <laughs> How many days are in June? 30. 31. Uh, <laughs> what is entomology the study of? Bugs. Fuck you. Uh, what year is it? 2021. <laughs> what noise does a bird make? <laughs> wow. Well done. That was that was beautifully done. Oh, I'm man. sure my fiance in the other room is like, the hell is going on? That's funny, <laughs> man. That's, that was crazy. Oh, okay, crazy. well, oh. I tally the final scores, although there is a clear winner. Um, <laughs> please tell me, uh, Justin, what do you have to promote? What do you got going on? What do I got going on? I guess I can say it now. Uh, today, I found out uh, I had my solo show accepted into the Hamilton French Festival. Nice. Yeah. So oh, I'll good. be- Congratulations. I'll be talking about that a lot on the internet. Uh, you're, are, are you presently in Montreal, Elspeth? Yes, I am. Yes. I next Saturday I am doing a McGill TEDx talk thing. TEDx McGill. Nice. Uh, from home, but it's through McGill. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, a lot of all of the material really from the presentation is uh, it's repurposed material from the solo show. So it's kind of like uh, a little taste. Uh, it's a taste of the tone more than the actual the little explicit mm -hmm. words. Uh, yeah, I'll let Ben talk about the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Ben? Uh, yeah. So, um, Justin and I co-host a podcast called Half a Star. Uh, <laughs> it's where bad funny. ideas, yeah, it's, really weird. Uh, it's where bad ideas make great stories. So we interview our guests about the worst idea they've ever had, and sort of talk about the fallout from it, and see if they learned anything or if they made anything good out of it. Uh, we have wrapped our first season as of right now, uh, but we are gearing up to come back with vengeance for season two. But in the meantime, we are not abandoning our listeners. Uh, we have sort of two new podcasts, I suppose you could say, coming out. Uh, one of them is already uh, releasing episodes and the other one is to come. Uh, the one that is releasing episodes is hosted by me and it is called Cracker Jack. And it is uh, basically because I almost got hit in the head by a baseball <laughs> in 14. I no longer play baseball, but I love to talk about it. And so I talk to my guests about baseball movies uh, and we sort of review the movie, talk about it, and talk about baseball in general. And then the other podcast uh, that is coming out is a podcast called Drunk Musicals, where myself and Justin and Justin's fiance, fiance Diana, uh, watch a musical that Justin has never seen before. And over the course of the musical, Justin gets absolutely shittered <laughs> off of his ass, and then he reviews it for us afterwards. I love um, that. Oh my goodness. That sounds amazing. I, it was really bad. Yeah, what like, have you done so far? Uh, so, uh, in the interest of public safety, we're okay. only doing this once every so often. Yeah. Um, but we have uh, recorded our first episode, and we covered Chicago. So, uh, for okay. any Chicago heads out there, it's a, it's a really fun episode because Justin uh, doesn't remember half of what he said. Uh, I think it's pretty funny. Uh, That's so anxiety inducing. Well, and, and yeah. what I find really That's funny crazy. too is that he actually throws a lot of his former collaborators under the bus in various projects that he talks about. Uh, so just in terms of a schadenfreude thing for me, I really appreciate it. Um, I will say, I, I will mention this as a tidbit. Uh, I mentioned, uh, where am I pointing? This poster, the guy who, uh, uh, he's a great Canadian playwright, Lauren Elliott. I got to work with him on a show. And I, I guess in my drunken spiel, I told a ridiculous story about working with him. Just not at all flattering. Uh, I did not remember it. But a couple of days later, when Ben sent me the recording, I listened to it. And I heard it. And I was like, oh, my God. That explains why the next morning I was thinking I'd send him an email. Haven't talked to him for a little while. I even framed the poster. I was like, hey, I found this. I'll frame it. Wow. I wonder how he's doing. I look, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's guilt. That's yeah. just guilt. 
Uh, um, no and I should point out that all of those podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, all anywhere podcasts are casted, you can find it. So excellent, yeah, definitely check those out. Um, and uh, yes, so at the end of that game, it was really that was a very fun game. Thank you both so much for being on. It's you awesome. are yeah, tremendous. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought we had a clear winner. And things changed. So with eight points, Justin, you are in second place. <laughs> <laughs> Benton, you won with 18 points. Whoa. That lightning what? round. You <laughs> answered it's just because in the lightning round, he I don't know if his internet's faster. I was watching your faces and he answered like, two seconds before you on most of the questions. Let's I definitely, go. I'd definitely, I'll take the loss at the hit of my internet, which I currently share with a hair salon. Next <laughs> uh, that's pretty The rough. lightning round is always very contentious because, yeah. <sighs> I couldn't you know hear what? anything you were saying. I haven't done this in a while and I uh, goofed the setup a bit. So I was just so watching good. for the answers. <laughs> My personal victory is knowing that green is made from yellow and blue. And not, <laughs> not yellow and green. I did green. hear that one. <laughs> Just because you're fast doesn't mean you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, I, I accept defeat graciously. Well done. Uh, thank you so much for being on. Thank you, everyone at home, for watching. Please like and subscribe and share. And we'll be back with a new episode soon. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.